Hey, divorcing gracefully and beyond sisters. What day is today? Happy Wednesday, right? (laughs) The days go by so fast. It's hard to remember. I'm Donna Rudowitz, and I'm so glad that you're here. And for those of you who don't know me or you're new to the Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond community, I am a licensed clinical social worker who has turned in that I would say practice, and I now am a expert rapid transformational coach, and I have a program called Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond, where we, in just 12 weeks, we really turn around our life. We eradicate the pain, heal our soul fracture, and get us back on track to living our most abundant life. And with me today is Amy Hinderer. Hey, Amy. Hey. <laughs> Amy is a recent graduate of DG, and I love these conversations because this is just where we get to chat, right, Amy? There's no Mm -hmm. agenda. There's nothing that we have to talk about. It's just an honest conversation. So why don't I let you go ahead and introduce yourself and who you are, and we'll take it from there. Hi, I am Amy Hinder, and I live in Northwest Indiana, Um, so it's still nice and cold and gloomy here. Oh, same thing Um, here, (laughs) cold and gloomy. Yes. Um, I am a licensed closer clinical social worker. Um, I currently work for Indiana National Guard and also Parkview Home Health and Hospice PRN. So I stay pretty busy. And a lot of times I found, especially going through this work with Donna, was um, that I need to practice more of what I tell my clients. Wow, look at that. (laughs) Yes, we have to we have to practice what we preach. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So um, I have just found a lot of healing and I am I value authenticity, so I am very authentic in saying I'm still a work in progress, um, but I just realize things a lot quicker and have a lot more tools now um, to get past some of those bumps a little bit quicker than I used to. I think it's beautifully said, um, and especially coming from the mouth of someone who is a licensed clinical social worker, who understands psychology, who understands people. And even in your, what I would say, Amy, in your area is you're with people through all phases of life. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like literally all across the board and then even with family members. And I think to me, it just brings it back to just how valuable life is. Yes. You know, so if anybody hears some cooing in the background, I'm babysitting a baby. I was telling Amy earlier that I am so lucky we have a guest with us. He's so cute. (laughs) Baby Cam. My neighbor had a baby and I was lucky enough to be asked to watch him for a few hours. So he's (laughs) with us. He's part of our DG Live um, Cam. What I was talking about with someone earlier yesterday, we were having this conversation and sometimes when we do, when we get called to the work we do, right? I don't know your story, but you know, I think most of us, when we get called to the work we do, it's usually because it's something that's meaningful to us or there's, it's something that sort of makes us angry that we have to do something in order to fix mm-hmm. it, <laughs> right? We're like, wait a minute, this is just not working. And that was my, my, my journey in divorcing when I was going through my divorce, I was looking for a good community. I was looking for people who were upbeat and positive mm-hmm. and who, who wanted to be in a relationship, who enjoyed love. They didn't want to talk bad about their ex or they didn't want to just be, and I'm not saying that it, they didn't deserve to be talked about our exes, right. but we just weren't going to waste our time, mm-hmm. right? That we wanted. And I, I couldn't find a community that did that. And so that's how Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond started. But the reason why I say this, this conversation I was having yesterday was, there's a difference between normal and optimal, mm-hmm. right? And remember how we talked in G- DG that we say that we, we're not here to live just a good life, right? We're here to live an exceptional life. Yes. And the normal part of the world will tell you it's going to take you half as long to heal from your divorce as you were married. And that freaking sucks. If you're married 20 years, what, you're telling me it's going to take 10 years? Mm-hmm. Right. What? Like what? Right? And then the yes. normal thing is people tell you, don't worry about it. Just get over it. Keep moving. Mm -hmm. normal thing our society will tell us is, you know, put it behind you and just keep moving forward. Fine. It's okay. You'll find the next guy or the next partner. And we're like, wait a minute, (laughs) that's not normal. (laughs) That's and, and, and and so I guess the conversation I want to hear from you, Amy, is in our belief at DG and and my belief is I want to live optimal and optimal means we don't have to take years and years and years to heal when we have Mm -hmm. the right system, the right tools, the right mentorship, the right, um, what I would say framework, we could get results in 12 and a half weeks. Now, again, like you said, it doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's done. There's, Mm -hmm. I think life is a continuation of it, 
but we don't have to buy into this story that you have to be suffering and miserable and you got to go through all the stages of grief and you got to do all this before you find happiness. Right. I think we could do it while we're finding it. Like, what do you think? What's, what, what is your journey and experience? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I absolutely feel that way. Um, I was like you, I was kind of like all these different preconceived things or how culture taught us how to mm -hmm. deal with divorce or deal with loss and that, I felt a lot of people thought I had to hate my ex and yes. I didn't want that. Um, yes. That's not who I am as a person. So that's definitely not how I wanted to approach it. We have kids together. I know we'll always have to have some sort of relationship. So really just didn't, didn't want that at all. My main goal when I joined was I wanted to learn how to love myself better mm. and to have all of those people pleasing tendencies that I had to go away so that I could stand up for myself and learn what I wanted because I felt I had lost a lot of myself in the past few years and that I don't have to just bow down and do what people want me to, but I can do what I want to do and that's okay and get rid of the notion of their opinion has so much effect on me because it's just an opinion. Um, so I love it. Look at the message. I love it. Right. Feelings are in facts and it's just an opinion. Right. It doesn't mean who I am. Right. Right. Yeah. So that was a lot of my work. Of course, there was some of the journey of the actual divorce because that did impact a lot of mm -hmm. what I was going through. But I have realized even after graduating, how often I did that in other relationships in friendships in work relationships. And if I was trying to date, like, I could recognize those old behaviors very quickly yeah. and analyze why am I doing this? This isn't who I am anymore. And uh, just go back to the basics of looking at who, why I love myself, what I really want, go through all of those modules that I went through to realize, no, this isn't what I want. Let's keep moving. And yeah. And to say it in love, because saying no, this is not what I want, is actually the most loving thing that you could do for yourself mm -hmm. and for your family members and loved ones. Is yeah. Because when you say, wait a minute, this isn't what I want, it doesn't mean you have to be a bull in a china closet and tell people, well, I'm not going to be your friend or you're not, I don't, you know, I don't agree with you. It has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You're just holding a loving boundary to say, wait a minute. And, and I think too, and tell me what you think about this, is that in DG, when we get out of the emotional tsunami that's in our own brain because we're creating our own stories and our own meanings. Again, not right or wrong or bad. It just right. is. Like that's just where, because it's difficult enough to make sense of everything that's going on. But when we, when we clear that out, we realize, wait a minute, I don't need just to accept or surrender to beliefs. Right. I could put a pause in there. Yes. And respond and then challenge it and say, wait, is this what I want? And mm -hmm. I love that you said that because I think as women, and tell me what you think. I think as women, we've been trained as a societal norm to almost throw ourselves on our own sword. The more that we give ourselves, you know, we drive ourselves crazy or we give ourselves right. away or we're, we're doing everything for everyone is the more that society looks, oh, like she's such a great mom. She's such a great woman. Look, she works 30 hours a day. She's always doing the bake sales. And she's, and meanwhile, we're home exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're tired. Yeah. We're not necessarily living life. We're sur surviving life. And we're not able to really enjoy the relationships that we created. Like we didn't have kids just to just to to be exhausted and 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 we can't enjoy we, you, we want to enjoy the relationships with our family and our mm -hmm. friends, right? Absolutely. Yes. And be yeah. able to make the choices that serve us. So tell me about that journey for you. So how has that been for you to be able to really make the choices for you at this point? So it's been really interesting because, like I said, there's been some situations where I realized I was going into those old behaviors and I was feeling very unsettled and I didn't know why. Yep. Um, so just practicing through the 12 weeks, um, I was able to be like, OK, like, why am I feeling this way? So then I could just sit with it for a little bit and realize like, oh, it's because I'm doing this people pleasing or I'm thinking that they're wanting me to present myself in this way, but this isn't who I am. So right, it's not I'm your going, identity. Right. right? So I'm like, going to go and do what I want to do yeah. and be true to myself. And I mean, in the end, it always is fine because, you know, like being who I am is surrounding myself with those people that love me. And I still get things of, 
you're radiating. Yeah. You look so happy. You're all of this. Yeah. Because I'm being true to myself. <laughs> you're being true to yourself. Yeah. It's so true is like is that it's it's like we're lighting our own pilot light. We don't need anyone else. Like I like to say, I I want a man in my life. And as you know, I'm remarried, right? But that mm -hmm. when I when I before I met Michael, I was always at the point I wanted to bring someone, but I didn't necessarily need them. Right. Right. Like we and even when you're married or in a relationship, it it doesn't stop. You still need to be your own lover in a sense. You right. still need to light your own pilot light because yeah. if we are depending upon other people to make us happy, the only thing that happens is we're never going to know what our day is going to be like because if that mm -hmm. person's in a good mood, then we're in a good mood. If that person's not, then we're not. If that person's having a good day, we're having a good day. Right. If they're not, we're not. And that's the people pleasing behavior, mm -hmm. right? And which is not going to serve you. And what I love, what I love more than I love more than I love when I see you talking about it is this uh, this what I would consider to be how we learn to do this is have a conversation, mm -hmm. not coming from the critical mind, not coming in to badger ourselves, but just saying, what is it about this? Right. Why am I feeling this? And and then coming, getting curious, right? Like, what mm -hmm. is it about the situation? What is it about me? And then and then what I find is inspired thoughts come up and it gives you the answers. You never have to look outside of yourselves for the answer. Right. Right. That inspired thought will come up and then you sit there with it for a moment. Mm -hmm. And then another inspired thought might come up and you sit there. But like mm -hmm. you said, everything is OK. Yeah. It's really funny because I've noticed okay. a lot of people recently have asked me if I'm dating, if I want to be dating. And it used to bother me um, when I felt like people were. Like t I felt and I used to feel like people were telling me how to live. It, I would take some of those questions that way, like telling yeah. me that I, I needed too. to do a certain yeah. way. And, and now, also making you feel a little bit like, well, why aren't you dating? Is there something right. wrong? Like, like, yeah. Yes. In order to be part of the, the, this, this, this crowd, well. Yeah. yeah. And so now I feel like I answer with, I'm not really interested right now, but if it comes my way, I'm not going to say no. Um, but I'm not like necessarily seeking it out um, because I'm still trying to consistently stay true to me. Yep. And um, at this, if I saw it out right now, I feel like I would go more into the old behaviors where if it, it's, it's just going to come to me when it's the right time. And, and I want to just stay here with you that. for a second, because this mm -hmm. language and for everybody who's listening, I want you to see what Amy's doing and be able to model that for yourself, <laughs> which is this is not a matter if we're going to have our soulmate come to us. It's just a matter of when. So if mm -hmm. you under, if you see how Amy is presenting and how she's talking, she's not in this, this lack mentality of, oh my God, am I going to be alone the rest of my life? Right. Am I going to be the cat lady in the condo? <laughs> <laughs> right. Am I going to be, because honestly, this, this is something so important for everyone to realize is that you are normal and natural and as natural as a woman to have subconscious and conscious fears about being alone. A hundred percent. But that's feelings. It's not facts. The data is, the data is, is that when we truly fall in love with ourselves, that's the best place to be. And when mm -hmm. we're abundant, when we're in that abundance, we understand the reciprocity and the laws of the universe. So we're not in fear or separation that this person is coming to us. We're just like, it's, he's going to come to us at, exactly the right time. And in the meantime, I'm going to live a kick-ass life. Yes, exactly. Right? And that's just kind of what I say is I'm just, I just say, I'm not looking right now when it comes, it comes and I'm fine with it. And like, I don't even feel that old feeling of they're telling me how to live anymore because I'm so confident in how I'm living my life that my answer is my answer. And if they have an opinion about it, I guess I answer well that they don't question it, but yeah, I don't even feel also, like it matters. <laughs> yeah. And you're also letting them be an adult, right? Yes. Is you're not taking on their emotional response to your statement. You're mm -hmm. acknowledging them and you're, but then you're letting them handle the feelings or the emotions that come along yes. with it. Right. Like how many, yes. I, I want you to think back in the time, back in the day. How many times, like if you were to say no to someone or you had to say, OK, let's just for, for example, you're responding to a birthday party invitation or, you know, a work invitation. And in your mind, you're thinking about all the ways you could say of, of all these things you have to do. Well, I have to do I have to go to Aunt Sally's house. I have to do this. I have to go there and then I won't. Be, and we're th but really what's a very proper way is just to say, I'm so sorry, I can't make the invitation. Where is the place I could send a gift? And I hope you have a wonderful day. And mm -hmm. you leave it with you know what I'm saying with them right. that we 
unknowingly create a lot of chaos in our life. Yes. Yep. And here at DG is we, we recognize it and we love that part of ourselves because that's what got us here. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if that, if that part of us wasn't here. And we also don't want to let that part of us go because that's a beautiful part of us, mm -hmm. but we also don't want it to be where we can't enjoy life. And I love where you're saying, like, it's just, I give my answer whether they like it or not. Yep. That's, that's their choice. <laughs> but I'm going, is over. I mean, typically I get more of a response of like, oh, well, you're just, you know, you're just radiating. You're just shining. Even from my answer. Well, we're, we're just so happy. You're happy. Um, but, but it's not that nagging feeling I used to have. I'm just really enjoying my life. So I'm just going to keep going with what and I'm you keep going. <laughs> and have you noticed, Amy, that when you stand in confidence, and when you stand with conviction, and when you are modeling a reverence for life, mm -hmm. that people respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I had much more difficulty in my people pleasing days, because I felt that almost I'm not going to say people were bullying me because it wasn't the case, but I almost felt like it, right? Because I feel like sometimes if people, and again, their intention isn't consciously to make you feel bad or anything, right. but people are going to get the feeling of that we may have a weaker spirit or mm -hmm. we could be overtaken or we could be um, convinced to do something. But when you stand in power and you stand in love and you stand with reverence for life and it's like, mm -hmm. this is it. People mm -hmm. respect that and they, and they, and they honor your answer and they take it. And it gives you just that much more ability to stand with that power within yourself, which feels mm -hmm. good. Yes, it does. It, it really does. <laughs> and I think also, I mean, tell me what you feel, but I think an another big part of it is that your loved ones that are around you, your family, your friends, your children, um, your coworkers, your clients is when they see you modeling that you're teaching them. Mm -hmm. Yes. How to do that. Really? Yeah, it's true. So what, let's talk about this. This is, I don't know why I'm feeling this because I think mm -hmm. it's national women's month this month, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. So it's us. We're here. We're powerful. Absolutely. <laughs> Can we, um, bust the myth, right? That it has to take years and years and years in therapy and years and years and years to get the healing that again, mm -hmm. I, I want to be very clear when I say this to everyone who's listening. And Amy has said this in the beginning, it's not like you just get this movement and you get this transformation and you're like, Whew, I'm done. I, that's it. I don't have to do anything and sit on your laurels the rest of your life. <laughs> it, no, it means like Amy, we talked about this, right? You still wake up and do your gratitude journal. You still wake up and do the things. And we still have wobble moments where we need to just take a step back. The difference is the refractory period, right? Where mm -hmm. things in the past would have taken us down for months, years, weeks at a time. It's a moment now, right? Mm -hmm. And we can look at it and change it. But let's talk about this whole thing. Like if I would have told you, you would have gotten the results that you would have gotten in 12 and a half weeks. Well, I kind of did when we first spoke. Mm -hmm. most, most people are like, all right, I want to believe it, but I'm not sure. But now that you actually see it for mm -hmm. yourself and you see it in other people, can we, can we just bunk this myth to get people off of this belief that it has to take you 30 years or whatever? to heal? Like, yes. what would you say to that? I would, I actually just remembered when you were saying this, one of my other social worker friends, when I was bef way before I heard about you, um, and I was going to therapy like every week, and I had been going to therapy for a long time, she looked at me and she said, there's something wrong if your therapist is not telling you when she's going to terminate your therapy, because it's not supposed to be ongoing. Um, and yep. so it just like kind of presented that truth initially, but I still was not in the place where I am today. Um, but I think if you do take the time and do the work, it's going to be a lot quicker because then it just reminded me of her saying, you're not supposed to be going to a counselor that's indefinitely. Right. That's right. <laughs> And that's, and, and, and you're, you're so true. And, and I actually, in my early therapy days, when I first began this work, I was operating as a psychotherapist. That's the, that's the model. And I quickly realized through, through data, right. And through doing the work and through science and always being on top of really human behavior and what 
what helps us move through things effectively and efficiently, not not just quickly, but doing it the right, right way. And it's consistently something that we could repeat, like you said, the tools, rinse, wash mm -hmm. and repeat time and time again, is I realized that in this particular area with divorce, separation, relationship, breakup, the the art of healing our soul fracture and creating our, our life and attracting our soulmate, therapy actually was counterproductive because every time you go to a therapist, you're just talking more and more about what you don't mm -hmm. want. And I noticed yeah. even in my own practice that people are staying a lot longer and staying onto the victim mode longer than they needed to mm -hmm. and it wasn't serving them. Yes. And I right? did feel like, mm -hmm. well, why am I not doing things to get over this? Why do I just keep talking about it? Like, I want to know how to make effective change within myself. So I felt not that, of course, I don't. I mean, I practice some talk therapy. So it's our background. So yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I think it it is good, but I think there has to be um, work to go with it so that it's not just talking and always going over it, but to actually see movement and to see healing, there needs to be some action to it as well. So um, that's yeah. that's kind of where I am now. Um, and of course, I, I see people that I talk to, but again, I kind of say like, need to be acting on this. What are some of your goals? Right. You know, what you have to be, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like making some mm -hmm. forward movement and not just bringing it up. And um, I do remember too, when I was going through my divorce, I was very thankful for my primary care physician yep. because she did prescribe me some um, medication for yep. depression and anxiety. Yep. And she goes, I really think this is just going to be short term. It's just going to be situational. It's not something you're going to need forever. So that helped me too. Um, because that's actually think, a really good point. Because a lot of women who are going who are going through very difficult divorces, right, or the ones that are emotionally trying, um, that typically happens with people who are in narcissistic relationships or abusive relationships in that sense. In that sense, and it's almost as if what I call it's it's post traumatic divorce disorder. Mm -hmm. It truly is, and your nervous system is upside down. You know, you're you're sleeping that you, there may be overcompensation and habits that aren't serving you, maybe drinking too much. I've I've had women who, you know, are dating too much, sleeping with too many people like they're making risky mm -hmm. choices because yes. their nervous system isn't able to calm down. And these are women who are successful women, have careers, have good family, have good friends. And they're so used to being able to fix it themselves. Right. And the difficulty, and sometimes there comes a time where Rome wasn't built in a day, and sometimes we need we need to take those small movements, right? And the first part is quieting mm -hmm. down the nervous system, and 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 that's like if you're taking an antidepressant or anti-anxiety, that's going to help you just just to just settle down for a hot second, right? Yes. So get through. I I think like having that model because again, it's not meant to be your forever. Right. right now, as a therapist, you and I both know there are there are women and there are people in the world who an antidepressant and an anti-anxiety are going to help them. And that may be something you're on for the rest of your life. Right. Right. Because their brain just doesn't wire and fire. And that 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 medicine does help them. And there's nothing yes. wrong with that. And that no. I want to just take out the stigma is people are like, wow, it's it's not embarrassing. It's it's your you actually are more successful and more empowered in my belief when you could look at yourself without judgment and just say, yeah, this helps me function better. Mm -hmm. Right. But not again, not using it as a crutch. Right. But there, that is it is a sort of it is it, it, it's, it's like a what I would call a journey that you did. Right. So the beginning, which enabled you to quiet down. And then it was the therapy piece, which enabled you to sort of have the distinctions and have awareness and, and understand it. And then when you realize, OK, therapy is sort of I'm growing out of it in a sense, or mm -hmm. I want to add additional things to my therapeutic process, then coaching came in. And so you you follow a path, what I would consider many women who are probably like you are following. Right. Right. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it and that's the journey is that sometimes we do need to take little steps and little steps. But the mm -hmm. way that I look at it is if you look in the past, it may you may feel like a turtle. But I want to remind you something of something. And this is not to you, particularly just anyone who's listening, is that you've got a freaking rocket on the back of that shell, girl. Right. Right. <laughs> and so there may be there may be times where in the beginning it's that turtles moving really slow. But you got to remember one step at a time. Mm hmm. And there's a, there's a time and a place for your primary care physician where you really need that, like you said, and having the right people in your right. toolbox. And yes. then there's a time for the therapy that that is really serving you and it's really good for you. And then mm -hmm. there's a time for coaching, right? Yes. There's there is the time, and no matter where you are in that journey, 
is just keep moving. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's what I think. I don't know. <laughs> Right. But don't you feel, at least for me here, the gift that I got from doing this work and the gift that I get to see every single day with women like you and your sisters in the DG community is we get our life back. So tell me how that feels for you. Like just. Yes. I mean, it feels amazing. because yeah. and um, Maybe even a different life because maybe we're right. even more confident and more wisdom filled than we were before the divorce. Absolutely. You know? Like I feel there's an old piece of me that I felt yep. I lost, but then there's such a new piece of me that I probably didn't even imagine was there um, because of this. Was first, I think, don't you think? <laughs> yes, you? yes. Yeah, so it's just, it's really nice to have that growth and have the self-love because it, was, it takes away so much of the outside noise that I used to rely on for validation. And I just don't need that. You just nailed it. You, let's just, I just want to repeat what Amy said. I used to rely on outside validation for my peace. And I realized I just don't need that anymore. Because mm -hmm. you create it. You're your own self-generator. Mm -hmm. Amy, this is like <laughs> gold. All right. So what what would you say to someone who right now is watching us? and And she's looking at you and saying, man, Amy is is me. This is totally me. I could totally relate to her. I could totally relate to where she was, where she is, where she's going. What would you say to her? I would say that you're amazing and take time for yourself. So yes. jump on in, join the sisterhood, um, do the work. Don't be afraid to talk in the group or put down whatever you're feeling. Um, look for your gratitude, look for your self-love and enjoy the journey. <laughs> yes. I love it too. And I, I think, I think you, you had a couple of sessions with coach Katie, right? You were mm -hmm. talking with her. Did you ever talk about the fawning, the technique with her? Mm -mm. You talked about the people pleasing where there's, there's fawning. So basically fawning happens when we're in a people pleasing mode and, and basically we do nothing because it's, over, it's just too overwhelming. Right. And so we're just, we stay. Mm -hmm. And you know what I say, it's like, you know, we, good decisions and good actions come from a hell yes or a hell no, not a maybe so, mm -hmm. right? Because when you're in the middle of the road, the only thing that happens is you get run over. That's right. it. <laughs> I guess it so I love how you said, you know, just jump in, join DG, do the work, join the sisterhood. There's, there's nothing that you're going to lose because most of the time when we're sitting on the fence, two things, we're only getting splinters or we're getting run over. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I have seen it time and time again. And this is why my mission this year is to heal as many hearts and lives, because I believe this is that if 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 I could heal the woman's heart like yourself, Amy, right, if I could heal your heart, then you could reconnect to your life purpose and passion the way you really were meant to. Right. You could, mm -hmm. you could now model that for your children. We break the generational curse yes. from this bleeding into your children and your children's children. So this is like our deposit gener generationally, like ever right mm -hmm. and 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 the belief and the knowing that we don't have to wait to get to heaven to have this good life we could do it now right, <laughs> right? like we can have a good <laughs> life now and we don't have to waste years and years and years and years because the longer you sit on the fence and the longer you don't take that inspired action is the longer that you're suffering internally mm -hmm. or the longer that you're trying to carry this uphill right this this rock uphill yes. and I have spoken to women who, man, I, I'm like, oh, really? Because because they're so they're talking about how things have happened, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this divorce must have happened yesterday, mm -hmm. and I don't like, oh, know it happened 15 years ago or 20 years ago. And again, there's no judgment there, but if you don't let that be you, right? If you're listening to this, don't because what ends up happening when you don't take action and take it from me, I was that person. That's the reason why I share and I have developed this to help you get through it fast because I sat on the fence for 10 years and I and, and I really look back and I can't change it. I wish I could have. I But the moment I started taking action is when my whole entire life changed. Mm -hmm. And now I can, you know, that's what I sort of inspire you to do. So what do you want to do in your future? What's on your plans? Let's, let's <laughs> time lap this. Let's talk about your man, like not, necessarily manifestation but your manifestations because you're going to look at this a year from now so let's let's put let's put it out of the universe what is yes. it here <laughs> you and i are chatting and you're going to say donna i am pinching myself because i can't believe this this is true that this is my life that i am living this life what is it um well for me i i just want to live my life um 
that's my like main overall thing. So I want to continue to find what brings me joy and continue to go for that. And so at this point in my life, um, I want to be taking the special moments with my children. I have yes. a sophomore um, who will be a junior next year. Oh my God, I know. I have, <laughs> I have a middle schooler. And so time is just going really fast. Um, and so sometimes if I get in my little pity party mood and I'm like, oh, I don't have much time for myself. But my thing was I always wanted to be a mom and I always wanted to be an involved mom. And so when I think about it, no, I want to enjoy my time with them mm -hmm. because pretty soon they're going to be out of my house and I'm going to have a lot of time to yeah. do whatever I yeah. want to do. But one of the things I've always done with my kids and I want to do more of, especially since they're older and able to do it, is travel more. So we have lots of trips planned. Um, I and love it. I did to do that. That's to my own heart. I just yes. actually, right before I got on here, because I still have that same value, is I have an 18 and a 21 year old, but I just booked, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing this sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. I just booked a house in North Conway to, mm -hmm. to enjoy with the family, with my parents, because it's so important to be present. Yes. Yes. So I just, I want to have that time with them. Um, and, but I love traveling too. So I do want to travel. Um, and I talked to you, Donna, a little bit before we started that yeah. I had my seasonal depression this this yeah. year has been Attica. a lot worse than yep. it's been in the past few years. So I got the little um, inkling that I might want to move where there's more sunshine um, in a couple of years. Um, I used to live in Tennessee, loved it. it. <laughs> yeah, let's put it on the list. So where would you, yes. what's, what, what are your places that you would want to be to live? So right now it's not really pinpointed. It's kind of just out there. Uh, I loved where I lived in Tennessee, lived in the Chattanooga area. Oh, so gorgeous. it would not be opposed to go back there. There's just, I just oh. never seemed to have as bad of seasonal affective disorder there. So I know that that would be a place um, kind of waiting to see where my oldest wants to go to college. Yes. <laughs> um, she has several California colleges on her mind. So if she heads out West, I might look that way. It's mm -hmm. more sunshiny there too. <laughs> so I'm yeah. um, kind of, kind of up in the air and I do like to keep my daughters since they're older involved in the decision-making because, um, I want them to be excited about it too. So my youngest is in middle school. So would take her input yeah. um, because we've moved a lot. And so if she wants to stay in the school that she's in with all her friends and activities, like I really want to consider that. And yeah, because I think it is a family. I mean, it is your decision, but let's just, but it is a family decision right. because that's what you choose it to be. And it is nice that you're giving the input or allowing them to have input because they they're, they're parts of the family. Right. Yes. They're, they're yes. integral parts of the family. And, you know, it's, it's just going back to focusing on our what, right, is getting right. back to the what and letting the universe figure out the how is because when we're operating at our highest vibrational frequency, we are clear. Our channel is a clear frequency that's going out. Right. And when it's not when we're stuck and, and, and something very important you said to me, Amy, and just now is what I was thinking is to me, it's a tragedy. I, I, number one, I think divorce is just a tragedy in general. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I don't wish it on my worst enemy. You know, yeah. I, re I really don't. It's just, there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing, there's nothing that's good about it in any way other, other than what we could remake ourselves after. Right. I do believe right. divorce doesn't happen to us. It happens for us in a sense that we do have a time to rebuild. Yes. But what it robs us and what it robs us so many times is most most women will be thinking about the past most of their day. Like they're in life, they're doing life, they're showing up, they're with the kids, making dinner, going to work, doing their stuff, going food shopping, going to the games and their bodies are there, but they're not present because they're, they're thinking about the past. Mm -hmm. And then, or they're worrying about the future. And the biggest part that they're missing is the now, right? right? Is the now. And, and that's the only thing we have mm -hmm. really is the now. We don't have yesterday, it's gone. It's forgot right. us. We, it's time for us to forget it, but we also don't have tomorrow because when tom there is no such thing as tomorrow because when tomorrow comes, it's now. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the only thing we have is now. And so this, what I would also call this, this subconscious pattern and this belief that let me get all my ducks in a row and then I'll do this or let me do this. And then I'll no. Get, get your life and your vibrational frequency and yourself in such a place of love for yourself that you could enjoy the now while creating your tomorrow. Right. Right. And yes. I love that you're doing that. 
is yes. that you are incorporating all pieces of the now. And like you said, I'm choosing to live this way. Mm -hmm. And we're and no I'm, longer the victim. We're the yes, I'm perfectly content yeah. um, where I am. And I just keep trying to, when those little blossoms start coming up in my mind, I'm like, oh, well, what is that? Let's explore it more. And just really, I used to be a huge planner. Um, and so now I just kind of am trying to let things go and see yeah. how things come to me and how they evolve naturally rather than me taking the reins to do it because that created a lot of stress and so much stress. I think it's just a good <laughs> form of planning if you ask me. And yes. I think it's actually like a fun part of planning. You mm -hmm. know, like it's like you're, you're still planning what you want. You're still... Right very clear in what you want but what the difference is is you're taking yourself out of how it's going to get there <laughs> you're letting the universe sort of come in and take over and for me it actually shows up better yes. than if i would have done it yes because if you, if you kind of visualize this like when we're in the planning and we're doing and we're trying to manage everybody around us by the time we get to the finish line we're haggard right. <laughs> or like, I'm exhausted. I can't like, yes. this is like this. No, nope. but when <laughs> now it's like a present when you're like, okay, here's what I want to manifest. Mm -hmm. Like for you, this beautiful, like this home with the sun, like it, it's going to manifest for you and you could actually enjoy it. Yes. Yeah. Hold on I know second. it's in the future. Oh, hold on. All right, little guy. Oh, all right. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, guys, you want to meet this little guy? All right. All right. Come here, little guy. All right. Could you stand it? Look at this. Little you spit it up a little bit? Yes, I see that. Hello. Now, is this the beauty of life? Right, Amy? This oh, is you're so cute. You know, look at this little face. Here you go. I know. You want your little binky? See, this is, this is such a perfect example of in the past, my old Donna would have been like, oh my gosh, this is not professional. How am I going to bring a baby on? Like, this is not about that anymore. This is life, right? How gorgeous mm -hmm. is this to be able to enjoy the life and to enjoy, there's Casey coming to say hi to the baby. <laughs> That's what we, you know, we get to decide how our life is going to go. Mm-hmm. Yes. No one has to choose it for us. And we get to do it unapologetically. And if people have judgments, so be it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> hi, you're such a handsome guy. Do you want to say hi to Amy? There he is. Hello. Hi. Oh, yes. I'm trying to get him out of the mic. <laughs> Let's Love get him. Okay, which way am I going? Here we go. Look how cute. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to say hi to everybody at Divorce and Gracefully and Beyond? Right? Hello. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> Right. This is the beauty of, and I feel like this, I love how things happen because it's, can you hear me? Okay. With a microphone. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's such perfect timing because this represents a new life mm -hmm. and the work we do at DG. Like when I see you, Amy, and where you started to where you are, I think when you started, I remember our first conversation and I'm pretty sure I was in California when I first spoke mm -hmm. to you. Yep. Right? Because one of the things I'm just going to let everybody know is that I, I, what I teach, I preach, I live it. I, and it's all about living your best life. And we had this conversation on the group call the other night, which is we make first class decisions. Mm -hmm. We don't do crumbs anymore. Right. And we're unapologetic. We get to live the life. But when I remember that conversation with you, I think you came to the table with um, a lot of skills, right. And you were already mm -hmm. in your mindset was in in a, in, a, in a good place. You already had the skills, but there was this this part of the bridge that that remember the one degree principle. Like yep. you, you came to the table with, with you were right there, right. <laughs> right there. But we just needed that one degree to get you over the bridge. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm I'm ready to stop like just crying whenever like yes. I feel good, and then boom, I'm bad. Well, and, so <laughs> and, I'm, and let's normalize that, that if you, this could be during the divorce. This could be five years post the divorce. You could be in the grocery store looking at a bottle of rice or, or a bag of Rice Krispies and break down in tears. Mm -hmm. And it's normal. But we didn't right. want that anymore. We didn't want we want spontaneous. We want to move from our mascara being ruined to our lipstick being ruined. Right. Nice. And we also want to move from spontaneous moments of crying to spontaneous moments of laughing. Yes. 
And that's where you are. Yes. And <laughs> you get to be a present mom to your kids. How, mm -hmm. what, how, how great is that? Absolutely. Always All right, my fun. friend. <laughs> well, it was so good. Thank you so much. Any, any last things that you want to say to our friends here at DG? Um, just that the sisterhood is amazing. I love everybody that I've already met and I can't wait to meet the new sisters coming in. <laughs> I know. And so what Amy is saying, just to fill everybody in, is a big part of Divorcing Gracefully and Beyond, of course, is the program. And of course, is you because you're coming in. Our motto and our philosophy here is everything that you've done up until the point of now, you've done a pretty damn good job. And we do the best we can with what we have. And until we know better, we, you know, then we could do better. And so we mm -hmm. don't look at our past as I would have, should have, could have, or I wish this was different or the critical side that we have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We look at it as, okay, here's where my life is. It's not where I want it to be. Here's where mm -hmm. I want to be. And I'm going to, I'm going to learn whatever I need to do. I'm drawing the line in the sand. And like what we say is it's before DG, after DG. <laughs> <laughs> we draw the line in the sand and we say, this is what I want my life to look like. And, and that's where we're going. But what we have come to, to know is that it's, you can't do this work alone. The community mm -hmm. is, I would say, is, is, is the integral part of, of it. It really is a missing piece of, is. of what is there. And it's so important because you, you join a sisterhood. So when you come into DG, we're sisters, we're family, and we support each other, we guide each other. And it's a combination of group coaching and of individual and then family, but all the pieces come together. And like you said, we get to hang out with the sisters we were with, we get to see yeah. who come, come together. And I feel like we are, even though we're all around the world, we truly join hands and we are a formidable force. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yep. I love it. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Hang out with thank me here you. for one second. And if anybody is interested in um, having a free breakthrough to life and love call with me, I'm going to leave my link underneath and you could just go ahead and book a call and then we will chat. All right. I'll see you later. Bye guys. Bye. Love you. All right. See ya.